Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Molly. I'm a gut health specialized registered dietitian who recovered from severe IBS and acid reflux. And in 2020, I posted a video about how I cured my acid reflux. At the time, I was studying nutritional science at Boston University, and I was really passionate about digestive health and I realized that there's just not a ton of support for people with acid reflux and IBS after medications have been given and may or may not have been helpful. So I'm going to be sharing, you know, my journey with acid reflux, what has helped me heal. And this is kind of like a revised video of that first video that went viral and has helped a lot of people. The messages I get from that video have been amazing. I'm so happy that that helped you. I'm so happy I decided to share that. And so this is going to be what really helped me heal looking back as well as a couple things that i didn't realize at the time helped me heal and then at the very end i'm going to also share how you can find out exactly what i did step by step and implement this in your own life so i'm excited that you're here if you're struggling with acid reflux i feel for you i know how frightening and anxiety provoking and scary dealing with acid reflux is it's really it's isolating and confusing and there's a lot of misinformation on the internet about it and once we've been given ppis if they help you know great but we're not given a lot of guidance on how to eventually wean off of them if the ppis don't help then we're sort of left with well maybe you can try a different medication or maybe you can increase your ppis but I want you to know that there are other ways to treat acid reflux. You know, there are ways to get real symptom relief, even if you have a hiatal hernia, even if you have a lower esophageal sphincter issue, there are nutritional and lifestyle strategies to help you heal. And I have dedicated my career to help people heal from acid reflux and IBS, but I would say the majority of my clients have acid reflux or have healed from acid reflux. And you can read my testimonials down below. They're super inspiring, and I hope that they inspire you to keep going on your gut healing journey. So if you're curious about my clients and my work, you can definitely check that out down below in the description. So let's dive in to how my acid reflux and IBS kind of all started. So I went through a really stressful time in my undergraduate degree at Boston University. It was a really difficult transition to, tra I transferred from a different university and the academics were really, really challenging. I was under a lot of chronic stress. I was under eating for sure. I had some disordered eating habits and I wasn't really taking care of my nervous system at all. I had dis I had nervous system dysregulation. My nervous system was haywire. I was always in fight or flight. And when we are in fight or flight, we cannot digest our food. So the fight or flight nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system is on the other side of the parasympathetic nervous system or the rest and digest nervous system. And you may have heard these terms before, but what does it really mean? So when we're in a state of fight or flight, when we're stressed, the majority of the time our body gets the signal that we are in a dangerous time or that we are in a stressed environment and digestion isn't as important so it sends our blood flow to our limbs digestive enzyme production can slow down and stomach acid production can increase or decrease depending on the person. Basically, your digestive system kind of goes haywire. In order to support digestion, we have to be in that rest and digest side of the nervous system, so the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. This is where our body feels calm, feels safe, it can digest our food well, and I'm sure if you have IBS or acid reflux, you have noticed a correlation with stress and your symptoms. It's definitely it's in a big factor to consider and it's well researched as well. There's a lot of research about the connection between anxiety and acid reflux and that worsened anxiety is correlated with worse GERD, worse acid reflux, which GERD, by the way, gastroesophageal reflux disease is repeated acid reflux. And that is what I had and what a lot of my clients have when they come to me. So I started to get really bad IBS symptoms. I would probably go a week without going to the bathroom. I had terrible IBS constipation and then it would flip flop to diarrhea, which is actually really common to have that flip flop. And I was really struggling with my digestion. The acid reflux actually came second and it started slow like i would notice a little bit of heartburn i would notice a bitter taste in my mouth especially in the morning sometimes i would have you know sinus issues or nausea a little bit of pain right underneath the um, rib cage 
the symptoms of acid reflux, some of them, and it got a little bit worse as time went on. What had happened that really pushed me off the iceberg and was kind of the thing that like thrusted me into severe GERD was a food poisoning event. And this is actually really common. It's called post-infectious IBS. Post-infectious IBS is when your IBS symptoms get worse after a foodborne illness or an infection. I have a lot of clients that come to me after foodborne illnesses or after COVID with worsened symptoms. And after I had that foodborne illness, I had terrible acid reflux. My digestive symptoms were even worse and I was constantly having regurgitation, heartburn, throat pain, um, chest pain, sometimes difficulty breathing. And I would wake up in the middle of the night and just vomit because of acid reflux. It was very severe. And I was losing even more weight, even though I was trying to you know, recover at that point and trying to increase my nutrition, it was really difficult. I went to the hospital a few times and if you have been there, a lot of my clients you know, come to me with similar symptoms and so I really understand how hard that is and how scary that is and how you're given like no support by the GI doctors. Or if you have been given support by your GI doctor, that's great, but more often than not, I notice people are not getting adequate support. After that, I went to the GI doctor and had a ton of different tests done. I had an endoscopy. Um, I had, you know, different assessments for different types of digestive issues. I had a lot of lab work done. Everything was normal. My endoscopy showed a little bit of irritation, but I didn't have a hernia. I didn't have a loose lower esophageal sphincter. I really, nothing came back remarkable. Even none of my blood work was remarkable at all which was interesting because I was pretty malnourished at the time and basically they gave me a PPI and I went on my merry way. What I forgot to mention is that also I had a ton of antibiotic use before that food poisoning event. So I think, you know, my gut microbiome was off balance. I think a lot of my root causes were undernutrition, chronic stress, nutrient deficiencies from both of those things. Uh, the foodborne illness impacting my microbiome, but also antibiotic use. So there was a majority of things. And then as I was saying, I went on the PPI and that was helping for a little bit, but eventually it stopped working. I was very, very, it was very scary. I was very afraid because what was I gonna do if my PPI wasn't gonna work? I couldn't live like that and I was really struggling. So I you know, was studying nutrition at the time. I knew how to read research and I knew how to interpret research. So I went into a deep dive of the research that exists for acid reflux and I started to learn about the herbs and supplements and all of the lifestyle factors that can impact acid reflux and ways to live to, to prevent symptoms. And I kind of created my own protocol. And it took about a year, but I was able to heal my symptoms to a point where I was able to incorporate, incorporate my favorite foods. It probably took about two years to get to a point where I really wasn't thinking about acid reflux. I could have alcohol, I could have chocolate, but it took probably about a year to get to the point where I felt like I was recovered. And then two years where I was really totally fine, no acid reflux symptoms. And I'll tell you also at the end of the video kind of where I am today and what that, what that is like for me. So stay tuned for that. What did I do to help myself heal? So one of the biggest things I did was start to actually fuel my body. When you have digestive issues, nutrition gets so convoluted and confusing and sometimes we forget what even is a balanced meal and we forget you know what what does my body need and we can get really sucked into keto paleo intermittent fasting food combining most of that is not sustainable and not balanced and so i had to really go back to the basics of like nourishing my body with protein carbohydrates healthy fats and make sure that i was getting small frequent meals Small frequent meals really, really helped me a ton. Instead of larger meals that were overfilling my stomach and just too much for my stomach at one time, smaller, more frequent meals were really much easier for me to digest. And so I created a meal schedule to help me stay on that schedule. So I wasn't going too long in between meals and I was able to get in enough nutrition to reverse some of the nutrient deficiencies that I was having. So low B12, low iron, Low vitamin D can all contribute to poor digestion and acid reflux. So it's something really important to consider and that really supports getting adequate nutrition. 
So in addition to that, I needed to create that meal schedule because I needed to have an early dinner. So a lot of my reflux symptoms were happening at night and my reflux and my bloating was getting worse throughout the day. So having an early dinner was pivotal. And dinner often was a light meal, you know, a soup or a stew or like a crock pot meal, something really easy to digest. Easy to digest foods are your friends if you have acid reflux. Sometimes soup isn't always well tolerated if it's too much liquid, but things that are like well poached chicken, well cooked fish, um, well cooked veggies, those things that take some of the work out of your digestive system can be super helpful. I really had to manage stress. This was absolutely huge. And if you have not approached your chronic stress and you are dealing with acid reflux and you're, you know, in the cycle of health anxiety, you know, Googling your symptoms, I have been there. It's really freaking scary and really hard to get out of, but you have to get out of the health anxiety cycle and the anxiety cycle to heal acid reflux. I saw a therapist, I started doing gut directed meditation, yoga, really doing things that got me in my body and out of my head. Um, doing things that bring you joy is extremely important. Connecting with friends and family, I isolated myself for so long and I felt like I couldn't go out, I felt like I you know, had to have dinner at like three or four, so I never had dinner with my friends, and I you know, never went, I, was, I feel like I wasted a lot of time, and I had to relearn how to engage in these social activities in order to really see progress. So I started going to those dinners with my friends and just you know, having a small amount of food, ordering something that worked for me, ordering something simple, asking for sauce on the side, um, ordering off the sides menu if I had to. Like no one really cared whether or not I was eating the same things that they were, they just wanted to see me. And I, it was so important to connect with friends and family to feel supported, to feel normal. So, you know, starting to really do things that bring me joy. Yoga was a big thing that brought me joy. I'm also a certified yoga instructor and the meditation piece was huge. So meditation really helped to calm my nervous system and repair my mind gut connection. If, if lots of craziness is going on in here, our digestive system responds to that. Just like, you know, I was saying at the beginning with chronic stress, if we're having anxiety, our digestive system is going to respond to that. And we have neurotransmitters that communicate between the gut and the brain. This is well researched. You can search PubMed and look at the gut brain connection. Our gut and our brain influence each other. Our microbiome Im impacts our brain, our brain impacts our gut. So we have to manage stress. And that is why I created my app, Flora. So I created an app for people with acid reflux to heal their symptoms and their health anxiety. And it is, um, you can find out more about it down below, but it's amazing to watch you guys heal on this app and to hear your healing journeys. And there's testimonials on my website. You can check those out too. They're super inspiring. But Flora is a collection of acid reflux healing modules, tons of videos by me on everything I did to continue this healing journey and everything I did to recover from acid reflux, as well as you know recipes, hundred, hundreds of recipes. A meal plan is on there, more meal plans are coming. There's a ton of gut-directed meditations, yoga to really give you the tools you need to heal acid reflux at your fingertips. So you have a little best friend in your pocket there for you. Whenever you're gonna go Google something, you can just open up the Flora app and feel supported and get the help you need. So really, really grateful for that community and it's so amazing to, to help you guys heal in that way. But back to my journey. So that early dinner, pivotal healing, healing chronic stress took a while. Healing my nervous system took, you know, a, a few months, I would say to really get into the habit of doing the meditations, doing the work and setting boundaries with school. I used to study like all the time. I would study like, I, I like stay up super late early studying. I just never would take breaks. And so I decided, you know, that that wasn't going to work for me anymore and I had to make a change for my nervous system. So in addition to that, I changed the way that I ate. So the way that I ate, you know, I used to have these big volume meals with a lot of veggies and um, I used to do like spicy food and a lot of carbonated beverages, like 
things that were going to keep me really full and i had to switch out of that and you know come back to nourishing easy to digest foods and the way that I ate was actually even more important. So the way that I ate at mealtimes, I call this mealtime hygiene, and I talk a lot about this on Flora. So mealtime hygiene is trying to make sure that you are taking five deep breaths before your meal. I call this the five plus one method. So five deep breaths, relaxing the abdomen, shifting into rest and digest the parasympathetic nervous system and one thing you're grateful for. So taking five deep breaths, think of one thing you're grateful for because the gratitude helps to ignite and light up the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a really important part of our gut-brain connection. And so these two things can help support digestion. So eating in a calm state, food anxiety is really common with acid reflux and I get that. I went through a ton of elimination. I used to be like removing different foods all the time and really afraid of food. And so I had to really get a grip on that and realize that, okay, the food is not causing my symptoms because my symptoms are all the time and they're very inconsistent. So I'll have an egg one day and I'll be okay, but then I'll have an egg the other day and have reflux. And when you're experiencing inconsistency like that and you're having reflux pretty much every time you eat, it's not the food. Like more often than not, even if you're having reflux, only occasionally it's usually not the food unless it's like a spicy fried big chocolate you know coffee situation it's usually not the food and so i had to really admit that like my my lifestyle and my stress and my pattern of antibiotic use you know that was probably what caused this and I had to change the way that I approached my meals. So switching my mindset, really acknowledging that food is healing and food is not causing my symptoms. So reducing food anxiety, practicing healthy mindset at meal times, chewing super well. So I used to, you know, eat really quickly, rushed, slowing down, chewing your food well. That is such an underrated tip for acid reflux. So, so pivotal. Sitting up tall, having good posture, and not slouching after meals is also really, really important and making sure that you're maintaining that good posture for like an hour after your meal. Avoiding laying down two to three hours after your meals, you know, having that earlier dinner, super, super helpful. So I had to change a lot of things, but in addition to that, what, what has also really helped me heal is using mucilaginous herbs. So mucilaginous herbs are herbs that increase the mucus lining of the throat and the esophagus and the small intestine to pr protect from acid erosion. So I used slippery elm and deglycerizinated de licorice root. Uh, those were really, really helpful. I tried a ton of different supplements. I tried aloe, I tried marshmallow root. Those are the two that I noticed really make a huge difference and have made a huge difference in my clients with acid reflux, GERD, and LPR. LPR is laryngeal pharyngeal reflux, and it's like the throat symptoms of acid reflux. So like throat tightness, uh, a globulus sensation in the throat, um, feeling like something is stuck in your throat. Those can be symptoms of LPR or laryngeal pharyngeal reflux. So that was really important in my journey because I was able to calm that inflammation in my throat and really get a grip on the symptoms and protect from the acid damage because every time we reflux, it's like putting salt in the wound. And so we have to stop that inflammation. The mucilaginous herbs like slippery almond DGL, deglycerizinated licorice root, they protect from the acid on your throat and they create a thicker barrier and they also decrease inflammation. So I found these through just research and I started to take them. I took them as capsules when I originally had started taking them because I didn't know better. But now that I've worked with you know so many clients and I've even done even more research and training in this area, I now realize that the best forms of Slippery Elm, Slippery Elm is the best form is powder for sure because you're getting that contact on the esophagus. It works much, much better than capsules. And then also DGL, the best form is uh, chewables. I think there really is something to do with that chewing, like getting that contact in your throat. So, you know, powdered form or chewable of the DGL is also great. In terms of the exact dosages I use, I think I did like 400 milligrams of the Slippery Elm twice a day and probably very similar to 400 milligrams of the DGL twice a day. Uh, but I, you know, I 
dosages are really dependent on the person and you should always get supplement recommendations from a qualified healthcare professional. I would love to be able to give you a supplement recommendation and I can in a one-on-one -on -one session. If you book a one-on-one -on -one session with me, we can go through your diet, go through your lifestyle, your symptoms, do a root cause analysis, figure out what is driving these symptoms, and then personalize a nutrition and supplement plan for you. And um, so you can you can sign up down below. Uh, sometimes I do get full and I have to close my openings, but if you if there's an availability, definitely book it because I'd love to help you and help you feel better, get your life back. But yes, I get a lot of questions about how much should I take, and it really depends. You really, you need to be getting these recommendations from a qualified healthcare professional, and you also need to do that because certain medications can interact with different herbs and supplements. So I wish that I, you know, saw a registered dietitian who specialized in acid reflux, but it was really hard to find. Like, I still don't really know of any dietitians that specialize in acid reflux in particular. So that's why I have dedicate, dedicated my career to this. And um, if I had found a registered dietitian, I would have healed a lot sooner. I'm sure it would have taken me less than a year because I tried a lot of things. I tried a lot of elimination diets. I tried a lot of different supplements and it was, it was a little bit longer than it needed to be. If I had that support and accountability, it would have been much quicker. So in addition to all of these things, I, I in, in addition to changing the pattern of my meals, having that early dinner, chewing my food really well, practicing mealtime hygiene, practicing gratitude, managing stress, you know, journaling and meditation and yoga and connecting with friends, doing things that bring me joy to heal the vagus nerve and the nervous system, and also making sure I was getting enough nutrition, doing the mucilaginous herbs, all of that was super helpful. Lastly, I will say I had to really limit caffeine during my healing journey. So I did have to take out all caffeine. It was a super big trigger for me, but that being said, everyone is different. And sometimes it's about finding the amount of caffeine that works for you. So a small amount of caffeine may be totally fine. You know, having a half a cup with some milk, I really like to help my clients find ways to incorporate their favorite things even while they're on their healing journey. If coffee is really important to you, sometimes we play around with coffee after food, which by the way, you should always be having coffee after food. Um, if we play around with the amount, we play, amount uh, play around with the type of caffeine. Sometimes matcha can work better. Sometimes it's better with milk or with a little bit of a buffer. Um, and so, uh, buffer as in um, something added to it, like to dilute the caffeine. And so we play around with the amount, the timing and the form. Um, that being said, where am I now with acid reflux? Can I have coffee? Can I have wine? I will say it took me, it took me a while to get here because I had a lot of stress going on with, you know, uh, doing my clinical internship, working in the hospital, it was a lot and now I work in private practice. So now getting through that period of my life, I am in a place where I no longer have acid reflux symptoms on a daily basis. So I can drink coffee, sometimes I have two cups of coffee. I never thought I would say that by the way. I always thought I was going to be really sensitive to coffee because uh, it used to give me anxiety and now I can have it and I don't have acid reflux. I can eat pretty much everything, I can, you know, tomatoes, chocolate, I have almost daily. And the only thing that really will sometimes give me some irritation is excessive alcohol, which I don't really drink excessive alcohol, but if I have like three glasses of wine, sometimes I will get heartburn if it's late at night. So, but that is normal. Like I think that people with digestive issues get really hyper aware of their symptoms and think that any little thing, like any bloating, any, any bowel regularity is kind of a big deal and it's normal. Humans will sometimes have digestive issues. So a digestive issues every once in a while are relatively normal. So I consider myself in remission from acid reflux because you know, alcohol is something that I probably shouldn't be putting in my body anyway. And if I don't do it, I'm totally fine. Um, but even a glass of wine with dinner, like one glass of wine doesn't bother me. So just a reminder there that, you know, if you, if you are in a, on a healing journey and you have acid, you've had acid reflux, you've had IBS and you're mostly free of symptoms and you get some symptoms, try to stay calm because you know, every once in a while, if you're having a stressful day or if you are eating differently, you're traveling, 
sometimes we will have a little bit of symptoms and that's okay and, and it's important to stay calm during those symptoms and remember that just because you have symptoms doesn't mean that you are not making progress on your healing journey or that you are failing or that there's something wrong you know continuing to practice stress management continue to eat in a way that nourishes your body and if you're really struggling with that i highly recommend checking out the floor app this is a really all-inclusive platform that has nutrition the pillars the pillars of healing so nutrition yoga meditation and acid reflux information so you don't have to google anymore and you can really get the evidence-based information about acid reflux that will help you heal so remember that you are not alone and that just because you have symptoms today does not mean that you all will always have symptoms healing from acid reflux is a hundred percent possible and it's really important that you know that and that you truly believe that you will get better this was another thing that i had to really wrap my head around is that i would get better i had to visualize myself better and i literally have chills as i'm saying this because I used to think before I healed that I couldn't. I, I just thought I'd always be sick. I was so afraid of always being sick that that was the rhetoric in my head that I would always be sick, that I always have reflux. You have to believe that you are going to heal. Anything in life, if you don't believe you'll get there, you won't. You have to, you have to change your mindset. And I know this sounds a little bit tough love, but whether or not you think you will, you're right with anything in life you have to believe that you will overcome this and have that hope and visualize that future for yourself and flora helps you do that flora helps you with the mindset piece of things so there's a seven day risk free trial that you can try it out totally free you can cancel before it ends if it's not something that is going to be beneficial for you but i really am excited for you to try it and i think that it will be a really really nice way to jumpstart your healing journey and start feeling better and getting control of reflux and anxiety so i hope this video was helpful for you if i missed anything any tips that are helpful for you guys definitely let me know um, and be sure to check out all of my other reflux videos um, i have a ton a ton of tips where i talk about what i ate in a day how i sleep uh, you know with reflux other supplements that have been helpful but those are the main things that have really helped me and so definitely check out all my other videos definitely check out flora and if you have not subscribed here, definitely subscribe, set your notification bell so you know when I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, mollypelletier.rd, and I will see you at the next video.